Hello and welcome to this video on when to use structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor with QuantFish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistics including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I teach for QuantFish. In this video, I want to address the question of when should you use structural equation modeling or SEM. And this is something that may be relevant for you, even if you're not a beginner with SEM, because from time to time, it is kind of nice to look back and reflect and think about when should I really use this technique? When does it make sense to use it or when should I maybe use a different technique and so I want to highlight the main points here the main reasons for when we or why we use SEM in practice what are the most important reasons for doing that and so probably what comes to mind to most people who are experts in structural equation modeling the first thing is that this is a technique to correct for measurement error in the observed variables or indicators or we could say in the measured variables. So whenever you deal with measured variables that have less than perfect reliabilities, it makes sense to consider using SEM because SEM provides a correction for measurement error by introducing latent variables as you can see here in this example latent regression model on the left hand side of the screen you can see we have two factors f1 and f2 and f1 is measured by y1 and y2 we're assuming both y1 and y2 may not be perfectly reliable measures of that factor f1 and therefore we have error terms in the model epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 reflect measurement error and or specific variance in those indicators y1 and y2 and likewise for factor f2 we have two indicators y3 and y4 and they both are also assumed to potentially contain measurement error as reflected in the measurement error variables epsilon 3 and epsilon 4. So whenever you deal with questionnaire items, questionnaire uh, scales or sum scores or test scores or ratings and you have to assume that those variables do contain some source of unreliable variance measurement error variance as measured for example by uh, cron bucks alpha which would be a reliability coefficient or other types of reliability indices derived from classical test theory whenever those reliability coefficients make you think that reliability is less than perfect then it makes sense to potentially use a structural equation model to correct for measurement error so the first step would be to determine the reliabilities of your measures and i have a bunch of videos on psychometrics also here on this channel where i explain classical test theory how it works how reliability can be estimated using classical test theory measurement models and techniques so you're welcome to check those out as well and so whenever you find that reliability is less than 1.0 you can consider SEM. Now there are some variables for which it's pretty reasonable to assume that they are measured without error or nearly without error such as for example age or gender or other variables like experimental condition for example when you know which condition somebody was in so then there may be a little error in those variables and then those might, might be treated as simply observed variables and then you don't necessarily have to have a structural equation model for that. Now why is it important to correct for error? Why could you not just use your measured variables with um, uh, less than perfect reliabilities. The reason is that measurement error can introduce bias, for example, in correlation coefficients. The correlation coefficients may be underestimated. So we have a correction for attenuation, therefore, in classical test theory. And I also have a video on that on this channel here in case you're interested. So measurement error attenuates the correlations between measured variables and therefore you might then have underestimates of the true correlations. Likewise, when you conduct uh, conventional uh, multiple linear regression analysis, for example, ordinary least squares regression, then one assumption is that the 
uh, independent variables in your regression model are measured without error. And if they're not measured without error, then the regression coefficients may be biased, their standard errors may be biased, then tests of significance for the regression coefficients may be biased. And so that then could be a problem. Also, when you run path analysis with manifest variables and the manifest variables are not error free, then the path analytic results may also be incorrect, may be biased. And structure equation modeling with latent variables addresses this issue by introducing latent variables. So that's maybe the most fundamental reason to use SEM when you have measurements that are error prone, that contain measurement error, then you want to correct for that. The next um, situation or the next reason to use SEM or condition we could say is when you have variables that are ordinal or continuous on both the measured level and the latent level. So when you have ordinal or continuous measurements, so item level data or scale level data, and you think that those variables measure continuous latent variables, meaning dimensions, for example, something like intelligence or something like um, mood, where there's a, a greater and smaller, so higher and lower, where it makes sense to order individuals on a dimension of mood levels or extraversion or something like that. So assuming that you want to measure continuous latent variables with either ordinal or continuous variables or binary would also work if you have a binary variables on the measured level, then uh, it may make sense to use SEM if your latent variables are not continuous. So if you're measuring latent classes, categorical latent variables, then you wouldn't use SEM, but rather you would use either classical latent class analysis or you would use latent profile analysis depending on whether your measures are categorical or continuous. And I have a bunch of videos on LCA and LPA also on this channel that you're welcome to check out. Next, SEM is a really good technique to model complex relationships. So when you have something that goes beyond what you can reasonably or easily model with an analysis of variance or analysis of covariance or a linear regression analysis, then SEM may be a method of choice. So for example, let's say you have mediation hypotheses, so um, hypotheses about indirect variable effects. So you have multiple dependent variables, multiple independent variables, and maybe multiple mediator variables, then structural equation modeling or path analysis may be better choices than linear regression because linear regression in addition to assuming perfectly measured independent variables, also is limited with regard to only allowing for one dependent variable at a time. So it becomes a little bit more tedious to model mediated relationships. And when your models are not saturated, your mediation models, when they're over identified, then it becomes really tricky or impossible to model that appropriately with regression analysis. And so SEM can handle various types of complex variable relationships with multiple dependent, independent, and mediator variables. It can also handle moderated effects, so interaction effects. It can handle longitudinal data appropriately. It can, can handle multi-group data when you want to compare multiple groups. And so for all these types of complex relationships, SEM is great. It also allows you to look at both mean structures and covariance structures at the same time and to test hypotheses with regard to those. It allows you to conduct tests of model fit for over-identified models, which is something that is not available in conventional analysis of variance or multiple regression analysis. So when you have a complex system of variables that you want to look at, then SEM may be good for you, at least if you have multiple indicators for each of the latent variables. Otherwise, you would have to use path analysis. So if there's only one indicator, per construct, then path analysis may be a method of choice. Again, you would have to assume that the variables are measured without error, at least the independent variables and 
that may not be reasonable. However, in some cases, path analysis may be a better choice than SEM um, because otherwise the model may become too complex if you have too many variables, for example, or if you don't have multiple indicators for the latent variables, then path analysis may be a good alternative to SEM, especially if the variables are relatively reliable. And then finally, another uh, important condition for the proper use of structural equation modeling is that you have a large enough sample size. And this is something where it becomes a little bit tricky because then of course the next question is, well, how large is large enough? So how large should my sample be in order to uh, be able to meaningfully conduct structural equation modeling. And there are some rules of thumb in the literature. However, it turns out that they're not very good because there are so many factors that influence what uh, sample size you need. And so the best rule is to, or the best way to determine this is actually to run a simulation study or multiple simulations for a given model with different sample sizes and then to check whether you obtain reliable fit statistics, reliable parameter estimates and standard errors, whether you have enough power also with a given sample size. And that way you can relatively quickly figure out which sample size may or may not be large enough for the model that you want to estimate. And I have um, a free workshop available on Quantfish for which you can find the link in the description where I show how a simulation study can be run for sample size planning using the M plus software. So feel free to sign up for that workshop um, that you find here below in the description for sample size planning. Also, I have a whole bunch of other videos on this channel as well as playlists on various issues related to structural equation modeling and factor analysis that you can also check out. Also, don't forget to take a look at my free M plus or intro to M plus class where I show the basics of M plus that you can also sign up for on the Quantfish website. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope that I will see you again in one of my additional videos.